everybody, this is Martin John, and we are here to talk about the Tao Te Ching. The Tao Te Ching is an ancient text written about 600 BCE, and contains all sorts of enigmatic wisdom, and it's more of a, you know, they're more poetry or riddles to be able to unlock different ideas about what it's saying. Nothing in the Tao is set in stone. Nothing in the Tao is only going to be able to be approached from one aspect. The Tao Te Ching is going to be able to, each verse of the Tao Te Ching, each of its 81 verses, are going to express things differently for different people at different times. It may, for you, mean one thing one day, and then you might pick the same number, um, verse to read the next day, and it means something completely different. And that's the wonderful thing about the Tao and how it's written and how it's approached. Everything that you got going on in your life can associate with something. And that's why I ask you to come up and pick a number. When you pick a number, you pick the number that is going to most resonate with you. Now, numbers and picking numbers can be seen as... Uh, well, some numbers are just picked more than others. And although that's true, I always like to think that, well, maybe at this time in the universe, in this time of life, these are the numbers that need to be focused on. So if you hear a number get picked, because it was funny, I, I did this show yesterday and someone picked 77 and then I was in a group meeting and someone else picked 77. So that can happen. And that's just meaning that 77 is just getting more attention. And maybe that's because it needs to. Brandy, how are you? Brandy Hughes, are you there? Sometimes people join without knowing they joined, and sometimes people join and don't for the first time and don't know exactly what's uh what's the what so i don't know if you're muted or what have you but i'll keep you on just in case for about a minute or so uh so what we do here on dow of the day is i ask you to come up and pick a number between 1 and 81 and we'll talk a little bit about that number and before you pick a number i'll ask you what's going on in your life and you know what's happening and maybe we'll try and find a baseline to talk about that verse that you're going to pick. Um, Because once we have a baseline, we know kind of how we might be able to frame or how we might be able to look at the the verse that you pick, the number that you pick. Okay. Um, I'm going to assume that Brandy um, didn't, either didn't mean to come up or is muted and having problems. Brandy, if you do want to chat, please come back up. I'm going to take you out of the queue. Uh, Just so if you do want to come back up, please do. I would love to chat with you and and, uh, see if you wanted to pick a number. Karen is going to join us. And then uh, Karen, how are you this morning? Nope. Karen dropped. Okay. So, um, so here's how this show works. Anybody that wants can come up so you can push on the little cat or, and then ask to join uh, the little sleepy cat there next to me. And if you ask to join, I'll bring you up and we'll chat a little bit. Like I said, we'll, we'll get a baseline for where you're at. I'll ask you what's going on. You know, you can talk about that as detailed or as loosely as you want. And then I'll ask you to pick a number. And um, when you pick a number, we'll kind of talk about a little bit about the, um, about how those all relate. Marsha, how, Martha, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. It's been a while since we've chatted. It's early in the morning. Yeah, it is. Where are you? I'm in Chicago. Where are you? You're in New York? No. You're on the East Coast, right? Right. Syracuse. Oh, oh, yeah. And so it's, it's, it's a beautiful morning. Like here, like it's like in the fifties and I love that. It's just nice and cool. I like that chill, crisp air in the morning. 
right. But it's uh, kind of cloudy here, but it's supposed to go up to 80 today. It's yeah. 63 today. Oh. It, it, these cool mornings of like midsummer, they're nice. Like I, I, I know those those hot mornings when it's just it never it never gives up the 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 ghost. Like it's always it's always hot days, nights, cool. Like there's not even a cool breeze. Those are those are hard days, but but these make it make it a little 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 easier to get through. I ought to interview you and ask you what have you, what have you been doing? I haven't heard from you in a long time. I haven't been up here. Oh yeah. Well, I've been doing uh this and I don't know, I've been I've been um a lot of a lot of things are shifting in my life. I have a really good friend that's moving to uh New York. She's going to Alfred, New York. If you yes. know where that is, yeah, is that she's where going. the Alfred University is. Yeah, she's going to she's going to uh, study ceramics at Alfred, and I you, suppose you mean and, to tell you have a love in your life again? Oh, I have lots of love in my life, but <laughs> no, 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 uh, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any romantic love in my life at the moment. Oh, so oh. <laughs> But, funny. Uh, love and love is wonderful the best feeling you can have yes and i and i i love uh there's there's so much love in my life it's it's, it's overflowing deborah was in italy for three weeks so. oh yeah whereabouts oh see oh or something florence oh. and OCC. oh OCC. yeah 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 oh beautiful Oh, that's, it's, it's so nice. I, I went to, uh, in May, I went to visit my family in Spain. Oh, great. I was in yeah. Barcelona for a while, one day or so. Oh, okay. Okay. So what else is happening with you these days? Is, is she still, is she still in Italy? No, she just came back yesterday. Okay. Now, do you guys live near each other? No. She lives in Maya Pack. I live in Syracuse. Okay. And I don't know the how far Mayor apart. Pack is about 45 miles from New York City. Oh, okay. Okay. So close, but not real close. <laughs> it's, it's good to me. Very good to me. Yeah, that's good. Good to well, let's, let's Let's pick a number and see what we have in the Dow. How about 11? Oh, 11. Emptiness is valuable. Eleven is a beautiful verse, and it it talks about how. Um, well, we'll get into it. So, spokes, tire, rim, and hub all make a wheel. Yet, it is the space where the axle goes that makes it worthwhile. Clay is formed into a vessel. A vessel's function is to hold things. Thus, its form includes emptiness. A house can be built, but if it were solid. It would be useless. It is easy to see structure, but structure is there to expose the value of emptiness. Any thoughts? Well, it's like lights going on and off. If they didn't go on and off, you wouldn't notice it. So uh, if you have emptiness, fulfillment is... Great because you've had emptiness already, so you can value the fulfillment. fulfillment. Yeah, I it's those. Say that. It's, a, it's understanding those opposites, right? It's like you don't right. know you you if if you only lived in a state of uh, wanting, you would never even notice what it was like to have. That's right. It's like uh, if I wasn't pretty when I was younger. And when I got pretty when I was older, I valued being pretty. Yeah. And then you would also value the lessons learned. And you wouldn't, you know, like, you know, there's that song. I think it's a Lou Reed song. It was just like, those who had a heart wouldn't break it, you know. That's right. And it's like when you understand the full, you know, and there's another verse that we read not too long ago that says, if you want everything you got to understand what everything is and there's this whole 
this whole thing here where it's like, you know, the masculine, the feminine, the, the, the structure, the substance, the emptiness. It's like you want to fill your house with stuff, but you got to recognize that you're filling what you're filling. Like you wouldn't be able to have that beautiful vase if you didn't have the space to put it there. And that space means it's empty. That's right. It's all about gratitude, too. Mm-hmm. And when you're being lonely and then meeting someone, yeah, and they fulfill your life a little bit, then you value it more because you were lonely at one time, you know. Right. And you, and you were aware of that loneliness. You were aware right. of that, you know, and it's like, it's always, you know, it's like it's we take things for granted so often because we don't have the full experience. You know, right. we, like like I went to I went to Spain with my niece and my niece is uh like my sister is well to do, let's say. <laughs> and um and my niece doesn't know wanting. And so when we were in Spain, my family in Spain was very much like, hey, we'll show you this and we'll show you this and we'll show you this for like three days. But she couldn't appreciate any of it. And so my family just said, OK, well, just let us know what you want to do. And then she got bored. <laughs> because... I, I remember you telling a story about your niece in the airplane. Oh, different niece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a different niece? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See but, how but I remember everything you tell. You me. do, yeah. You, I, I'm, I'm, Isn't I'm it impressed. Wonderful at my age, I have such a wonderful mind and such a wonderful memory. And when I see my friends, I say, "Oh my gosh, they're having a mental problem." And then I have gratitude that my mind is so great. You know. Yeah, you know, it's so good to be able to see that, right? So good to be able to like be able to look and be like, "Oh, let me let me be grateful for this that I have now." Right, right. While I have it. Without, with humility. Because as as we get older, like those things can become forfeit. Those things like, you're not promised it, but you get to have it. You get to have this experience. And you get to, you know, wow. like be in this space of using your mind. So you don't, you know, use it or lose it, they say. Well, you can have empathy. If you have it all, like if you come from a rich family, how are you going to have empathy for the poor? You know? That's right. It's like having an experience, it's even a single experience, just so you know the emptiness of, of that which your life is full. That's right. Mm-hmm. I, I remember Deborah telling me the number 11, 11, 11 meant to something. Yeah, 11, 11, there's a lot of people that... Um, like you know, the, 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 they're called eleven eleveners, <laughs> and um, and I was introduced to them many many years ago, and they uh, there's there's significance to it. I don't know all of the significance that is surrounding it, but eleven is you know eleven is an interesting number because it's two individuals, right? So you asked me about my me being partnered and whatnot and talking about love. And and that's an 11 thing, right? That's two individuals coming together to make a one thing. You know, so numerology and stuff like, you know, like the number two, like every number has its significance, but 11 is uh, manifest, shown as two ones, right? Two individuals. I remember a song. It was called One is the Loneliest Number. One is the song. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. Two can be as bad as one. <laughs> the loneliest number is, that, is the number is that one. True? I didn't know that. That's, That's the, the line. line. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's it. You know, and I think it's uh, like I, I think that reference is just like you know you can still be lonely with 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 someone in your life, but but the loneliest number is the number one. Loneliness is a mental thing, too, you know. Yeah. You know, I look at aloneness versus loneliness, and there's two different things. There's like, are you feeling alone or are you feeling lonely? Because those are, those, like, that's a mental thing, right? Like you said. It's like, like lonely is how you feel, but you could be alone, and you can really embrace that aloneness. Like, I love embracing my aloneness, but feeling lonely is a different thing. That is very, very 
smart of you to say. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I found somebody now that wants to be my companion, which is fills my life a little bit. So oh, that's, that's nice. Did you find someone that that you want to be your companion? <laughs> is it just one side? Not at the first. And now it's it's nice to have someone that wants to be with you. You know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially when they want to be with you as you are. That's right. I don't change for anyone. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it. I can't make any changes now. I've, I'm too yeah. old to make changes. <laughs> well, change change still happens, but yeah, you know, you just like you just let that you just let that flow. You don't you don't force it. Yeah, you're doing. I'm so glad for you. I'm, that's so beautiful. I'm I'm very. That's it's nice to know that there's. You know, it's like someone wanting to be by your side and to support you and to 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 listen to you and to have a coffee with you and right. like those things are so beautiful. And that's really, you know, that's really what life. That's that that's how we get to know who we are. You know, everything is in the lyrics of a song. It is. I've looked at life from both sides now. You know. Oh yeah. You know, it's love's illusion. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know how some of these songs, the lyrics, I don't know. They're like written in the half light, you know, if you understand what I'm saying. I do. I don't know. I don't know where some of these. Li- and my head is full of lyrics of songs. And, you know, I like poetry, but some of the lyrics of songs, I don't know where these people wrote them, you know. I know. There, there, there are some songs that just like I listen to, and my body just cries. I'm just like, but oh, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm really yeah. listening, you know, like it's I could like listen Christmas to it, and it's Carol, just a song. Yeah. Oh. You know, I, I even music, like, but you know, Beethoven and Bach, beautiful, but lyrics, music with lyrics that yeah. people really have feelings that when they wrote the lyrics, it's really beautiful. I'll. Um, there are times where I, I just think about the lyrics of the national anthem of the United States and I'm like, oh man, so powerful. You know, like so many songs are like, have so much to offer. And, and, and when you just break it down, like there's this, there's this one song by Tom Waits that says, um, come down off the cross, we could use the wood. And it's like, oh my stop, God. stop, stop, oh like. God criticizing yourself and come down and we can and we could be together you know and there's this like it's like oh that's just so powerful yeah so i always tell deborah she writes in the half light you know yeah it's inspired it's yeah i don't know where it comes from you know uh some of these uh lyrics a lot of it has to do with the time you know in the area you know and, uh, yeah no absolutely absolutely and and where we are within i talk about the relationship with consciousness where we are like are we able to touch that like you're saying that half light like that like are you you're you're you know, you're reaching for that for that that one objective experience I remember her writing here in the half light. I write the songs here in the half light. She wrote a song called. No, oh, beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I sometimes think of the songs, that uh, lyrics, unbelievable lyrics. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming up and sharing with me. And that was 11. And you have a very good day and yeah. make a lovely and wonderful long relationships. And Oh, thank you. You, you, you cut out there if you wanted to. Um, Karen, uh, who came on earlier, has been in the queue. Let's see. Karen, how are you, dear? Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, dear. How are you? Very good. Uh, I'm new. I'm 
fairly new to Noom Vibe just a few days, and I don't know what happened. I checked in and got pumped out, but... Oh, I'm sorry. I I did. I I pulled you up. Um, don't know how you got dumped out, but um, but here uh, you are. No, no, you pulled me up, and I'm sure I've been having like tech issues pretty much all week. So it is absolutely a uh, new user uh, error. I'm okay. sure. It's new. Okay. We'll just Thank we'll just so chalk much. it up as user error. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll just chalk it up. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where I am, it's first thing in the morning, so. Yeah, so where are you that, at? That could be part of it, too. Um, I'm in um, the U.S., in New England. I'm in Rhode Island, so I'm uh, Eastern Standard Time. Okay, I'm in Central, so we're, I'm, I'm still an hour ahead of you. Okay, all right, got you, got you. Um, uh, say, thank you uh, for this. I was curious, and I don't know when you came on, so if this uh, number had already come up, um, I was curious about number 21. Number 21. Okay. <clears throat> now, before I get to know you at all, because sometimes I like to chat a little bit with my guests just to kind of see what's going on with them. But before I get to know you, I'm going to go ahead and read through this. And I just want you to know that um, this is the Dao De Ching. Uh, if you're not familiar, we'll chat a little bit about that as well. But... Um, We'll go ahead and read this first, and then we'll and then you'll guide us through what it where it connects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through this, and it's hard when you hear something for the first time to really kind of grasp it, especially because this is a Tao. This is a three thousand year old text that is, you know, filled with all sorts of things. So if there is a word or a phrase that you hear that stands out maybe energetically stronger, let me know what that is when we're done. You know, I'll ask you what you think or what stood out to you. Okay, so you don't have to get it all. We'll go through it line by line after we chat a little bit. But um, number 21 is entitled, Tao is not temporary. And it reads, the master is at peace knowing she is of manifestation and that manifestations are always temporary. Knowing this, she always follows Tao. How can she be at peace knowing she is temporary? Because she doesn't cling to her life or ideas and still she is fulfilled. Tao cannot be fathomed or known. How can she follow it? She allows it to lead her from moment to moment. Tao is, and always is, even before manifestation of time and space. Tao is beyond both temporary and forever. How do I know this is true? The evidence is within me, as it is within you. What stood out to you there? Oh, wow. Wow. That was beautiful. Um, Okay, so for me, what stood out was um, as we are the creators and connected to our creators, we are all connected. Um, That is everything that is temporary is also infinite and continuous. Mm-hmm. Constantly expanding mm-hmm. um, throughout the cosmos and universe, and as manifestations are temporary, they're only as temporary as our desire and authenticity to create them, and as they are created, they are ever evolving and continuously changing with the flow. Yeah. That's what stood out. Well, wow. that's, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. That's Woo! a lot. <laughs> oh, thank you for that. Wow. Wow. And I would not say I am well versed in the Tao. Um, I do know some, um, and, um, yeah, this just um, um, let me know that um, it's a constant wisdom and knowledge being learned. 
So thank so, you. So so wow. let me let me before you go running off. Um, you can you can run off if you if you if you need to. But before you do, if 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 you spend a little time with me, um, let me ask what's what's going on in your life right now that that you need to understand that there's some surrendering that might need to happen. Um, well, I'm at, well, surrendering needs to happen for me because I'm actually uh, undergoing um, transitions right now and some death, uh, ego death, but also in my physical environment with relationships mm-hmm. um, and personal um, relationships shifting right now. Um, and holding space for that as well. And I'm also going through some transformations and, and rebirth, um, within my business, um, and continuing to, um, actually transform relations. I have, uh, two, um, uh, teenagers at this point, and, um, <laughs> we're going through, um, some beautiful, beautiful healing and transformations as our relationships evolve. So, oh, yeah, so I, I do have a lot going on. So, yeah, thanks. thanks. So when I, yeah, so when I, when I see this verse and I hear you, right, like I, I, I hear this, you know, you know, what we start here with, and this is where I just kind of go through line by line and we start looking at things, if you still have the time. So, uh, the master is at peace knowing she is of manifestation. Mm-hmm. You know, like you seem very much at peace with all the transformations that are happening in your life. And in, in, in like, not that they're not difficult, not that you're not being challenged by them. However, you know, we, we look at the idea that like, how can she be at peace knowing, like, how can you be at peace knowing that all of these relationships are temporary? Well, that's exactly how I can be at peace with them because they are temporary and I can enjoy and be grateful for them while they're here and love them as they, as they transition into something else. As we have death of my ego, my identities, all of the things that, all of the things that defined this relationship with the world, those are things that are going to be shifting and it's good to be shifting and it's good to be changing and facing these things. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. It, and for me, knowing that like for here, yes, these relationships are temporary, yet. Um, the, yeah, they're still inspired by Tao. It, yes, yes. And actually, they're ever connected. Right, um, right. Just, this is all connected. Just, Right, right. And it's just um, being um, grateful for, the, you know, grateful and hold space for the separation and also the love uh, because uh, I wouldn't be here right now going through all of the transformation and ego death if it, if it wasn't for, you know, um, my husband who I'm separated from. And yeah. it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. You know, and it says here at the end, and we're going to just skip down to these last few lines, Tao is and is always. So if we take that, <clears throat> we take that line, and then we say, okay, wait, the master is at peace knowing she is of manifestation and that manifestations are always temporary. Manifestations are always temporary. This relationship is always temporary. This body is always temporary. This identity is always temporary. Tao is and is always. And so that which is at the core of the relationship, that which was, that which was the inspiration for the relationship is, and is always. Even before the manifestation of time and space, this relationship, this being, this me, this you, that is coming together, this oneness that we get to experience through our subjective experience. I'm having a subjective experience of this relationship, and yet there is an objective experience to be had, but I don't know what it is, although it is being had within me. 
through Tao. Tao is and is always, even before the manifestation of time and space. Tao is beyond both temporary and for forever. That's what, that's what inspired all of this. How do I know this is true? The evidence is within me as it is within you. And when you and, I mean, hopefully your husband can see this as well. It is painful. It can be. But it is also, it is also just manifestation. The relationship is just a contract. It's just this time. And this time has passed. But that's only in the manifestation. Beyond the manifestation, the love exists, the respect exists, and it is all deeper than this surface experience, than this manifest experience. Yeah, absolutely. As you were speaking, you know, what was coming to me was this, human uh, experience of love, right? But yet just um, interconnectedness and love so much greater and um, authenticity uh, being so much greater from a interconnectedness and uh, universal uh, collective experience. And, and I heard you mention contract and it brings me um, and I can hold the space and the grace knowing that um, this was part and is part and will continue to be, you know, um, throughout this lesson, this time, um, the contract. And, and I can release that uh, with love. Yes. Yes. Oh. Karen, thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Martin. Um, this is actually the first uh, live I've done. Like I said, I'm new to um, Noom, like the, the whole uh, concept of Noom vibe just this week, um, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it's beautiful. I was brought here and brought here in this moment, and thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. So, so much appreciation. This was amazing. And oh, I'm 21, glad. 21 is a fabulous number. It is actually also my b birthday number. <laughs> oh, wonderful. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> I, will, I will be sending, and I do this, so I'll be sending you the text to 21 um, after... I after we wrap up and I and I have a little time to write it out and stuff, but I'll send it over so that you can you know meditate over it and it'll it'll be here in Noom Vibe um, uh, through the chat channel. I so appreciate this and and uh, do you do this on certain mornings a week or this yeah Monday through Monday through Monday through Friday uh, oh, okay. six a.m. Central to seven usually. Okay, thank you so so much. Um, Absolutely, amazing, I look forward to connecting again. Yeah, yes, for sure, for sure. Take okay, care. Karen. Bye bye. Okay, well that was Karen, and thank you so much, Karen. I'm thinking twenty one. Uh, Francis, how are you? Are you with me? Um, all right, so I'm going to give Francis just like I, I, I always do. I give, give them just a little time to uh, kind of figure things out because I know a lot of people are new to Noom Vibe. And they might not know how it works. They might be muted or whatnot. But as we were talking to Karen about 21, so what's interesting is like we had Martha come up, pick 11, and then we had... Um, Karen come up and pick 21. And the interesting thing numerically, as I look at these two numbers in front of me, right? 11 is two individuals and Martha's in a new relationship, right? And so that's two ones. And then we look at Karen, whose number was 21, and she's separating from her partner. And it goes from two down to one. And that's also interesting because 
the way that we were talking, right, with the, and I'm going to go ahead, Francis, I'm going to drop you out, and if you wanted to come back up, please do, um, but just in case that that was an error, I don't want to kind of have you locked in there. Um, so what was interesting is the way that each uh, Martha and Karen were talking about things and the stage of life that they're each in and all of those sorts of things, right, we're, we're looking at numerically, the experiences that they're having and it just expresses itself numerically. Right? Um, whereas the relationship that Karen had may have been a more immature relationship than Martha is getting herself involved in because Martha is older than Karen, or I assume, you know, I, I can't, I can't, I don't know how old these people are. Um, but it does seem that way. Um, and I know that, um, Karen is getting separated, right? And separated is, you know, one, nothing is separate, right? And so, but there is this, this idea of like, you know, she mentioned she's separating from her husband. So there's a two, right? Two people make one thing and that's the number two, right? Um, but we look at Martha's number 11 and that's two ones, two individuals. And I always look at relationship as being two individuals. But in our society, that contract brings those two together to one, to one thing, one thing, that one thing being a relationship made up of two. And then it's like, oh, but I need myself back. I need to, I need to get myself back. And so many people are doing this as we, as our relationship to consciousness changes, as we, as we continue to evolve our relationship to consciousness, we have to be individuals again. There was a time during our, you know, the last month, couple millennia while we were dealing with logic and we were kind of bringing logic to its end, um, where the group was the, so, the sole important thing. But before that, you know, like the individual relationships within the groups we're important. Now it's just a group. And so it's like the group is important. Get married. Right. And those are old ideas. Those are ideas like now it's going to be about the individual. And that doesn't mean that the individual won't be in relationship. Of course, they're going to be in relationship, but they're going to be in a relationship in a different way. Those relationships aren't going to be what's important. It's the individuals within the relationships that are important. I'm important. You're important. We're in a relationship. We are both important. So what I want isn't going to be, you know, like I am not a transaction. Right? We're not going to be in transactional relationships. We're going to be in relationships where I fulfill myself, you fulfill yourself, and we come together to celebrate and support each other in doing that. And those are different sorts of relationships. It's like I don't want, I don't want someone to rely solely on me and I don't want to be Someone who relies solely on someone else. You don't bring me happiness. Like, like, um, Martha mentioned, there is fulfillment in loving someone else. And you can find some fulfillment in that. But you recognize within yourself that which is, that which needs fulfilling and you do that work. I'm going to read number 21 again. Tao is not temporary. And there's something overarching in this one that's really interesting about relationships and, and, and things, you know. And that's why I asked what, that's why I asked Karen what she has to surrender to. What do you have to surrender to after reading this? I read this and it was just like, oh, the master is at peace knowing she is of manifestation. She surrendered to the fact that she's of, mas of manifestation. And that manifestations are always temporary. Manifestations are always temporary. Knowing this, she, she always follows Tao. What is Tao? Tao is that inner inspiration. Tao is that, that core within each and every one of us that's guiding us to be inspired, to act, to do, to be. Then we go through these two sections where it says, how can she be at peace knowing Tao is temporary and Tao can't be fathomed? How can she follow it? Well, how can she be at peace knowing she is temporary because she doesn't cling to her life or ideas? What? But when you get married, that's what you're clinging to, right? 
when you have kids, then you then you're you're responsible for these kids together, and you're responsible. You have all of these things. You have all of this stuff. I'm clinging so that I know I'm going to be safe. I'm clinging so that I know that I'm going to be useful. I'm clinging so that I know I'm going to be special to somebody. Tao cannot be fathomed. How can she follow it? She allows it to lead her moment to moment. She doesn't try and cling. Like this relationship is what it is and it's forfeit. It can end at any moment. And yet I want to cling to it. So let's get married so we can prove to one another through an investment in time energy, and money (laughs) that we aren't going anywhere. But if one of us passes away, if one of us dies, they're going somewhere. And then I'm back, you know, to square one, right? I'm here now doing this thing. And it's like, no, it's like you are, you are living a life separate from the relationship, separate from other people, separate from everything else. What is your life moving towards? What is, what is your life right now in this moment? And what is Tao asking of you? What are you, what are you, what are you becoming? What are you, what, what are you following? Who are you following? Are you, are you looking at a destination? Are you looking to protect yourself from future losses? Because she doesn't cling to her life. She doesn't cling to the definitions of what her life is. She doesn't cling to being who she is, her identity. She doesn't cling to her life or ideas, and still she is fulfilled, fulfilled in this moment as she is without trying to be anything more. Tao cannot be fathomed or known. How can she follow it? She allows it to lead her from moment to moment. It to lead her. That means like, what, what am I doing right now? I'm not carrying what I was carrying yesterday. So what am I going to do today? You know, the manifestation, this, this world, this life that we're living right now, this life that we're having, this experience, and that is manifestation. It is simply unfolding. And it is Temporary. No matter what it is, if it's your home that you've spent years and years and years trying to afford, your family that you spent years and years and years trying to, you know, build up, trying to find, trying to, trying to have. Now I have it. And all I want to do is protect it and save it and make sure that it's mine always. It's like, no. It's not yours. The house isn't yours. It's itself. And it's going to stand and fall and be sold and be loved in different ways. Your partners, your husbands, your wives, your children, your, 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 your lovers, your friends, they're all individuals that are having completely different experiences than you. They have different needs in their lives that don't include you. And Tao is inspiring them. You know, and when we, when we get upset and we say, well, they can't do this, that's because we're holding on to ideas. We're holding on to the manifestation. We're holding on to the contracts. We're holding on to all of the things that we, that are not forever, that are temporary, that are manifest. Tao is and is always. Even before the manifestation of time and space, Tao is beyond both temporary and forever. And that's why I asked about being, about what do you have to surrender? Because not surrendering means that you're grasping, not surrendering to something. Not, you know, like if you go in for a massage and you tense up while they're massaging you, you're not surrendering to the process. No, let go. Let go of your muscles. Let 
your chiropractor do the work. Let your masseuse do the work. Let it happen. You know, it's oftentimes when we're like, okay, we're facing a divorce or we're facing a separation or we're facing a change and we're not ready to make that change. Okay, that's fine. It's fine, you know, like, because I'm coming out of addiction, many of you have heard this before, right? Like, the idea, like, if you're not ready to do it, recognize that you don't like that you're doing this, right? If you're not, if you're not, if you're continuing to remain in a relationship that's not helpful and not loving for you, just recognize you don't like that you're in this relationship. You don't like that you're not able to do that. And you're going to do it until you don't. Until you're ready. You're going to keep putting yourself in that position. Until you're ready, you're going to keep smoking. Until you're ready, you're going to keep drinking. Until you're ready, you're going to keep doing these things. But if you ignore the fact that you don't like that you do it, you're going to do it for a lot longer. Just start with, I am i don't like that I'm doing this. And then step into, I'm going to do it until I don't. When you can embrace both of those things, you're surrendering. You're surrendering to the fact that you don't have the energy to do it right now. And that you're going to do it until you don't. There will be a time that you don't. Is this that time? Because if it is, then don't. But if it's not, continue and recognize that you don't like that you're continuing to do this. But it's okay. It's okay. You just don't like that that, 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 that this is what's happening. Surrender. Let it go. You don't have to grasp. Tao is here supporting you. It brought you into that relationship. And it will bring you to whatever's next. I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be a relationship. Especially one that's has the same confines and constructs as the last one because maybe that's not what you need anymore. I know we have this idea that that's the pinnacle. That's the way we want to be. We want to have this relationship. But I'm seeing more and more that it's like the relationship I have with myself is the one that needs nurturing more than anything else. And the evidence of that, like as it ends in this number 21, that's within me. I see deep love there. And then I get to be able to love others that way as well. That much, just that much. Like as much as I can love myself, I can love others. And the way that I love myself and in and, and the manner of which I love myself, that, that unfolds and is offered to others around me. I don't even know how it, how it transmits, but it does. And people are, are inspired, grown, And grow through that love, through those experiences. You know, and this is a, this is a venue where I can love individuals that are, you know, around me and love individuals that, you know, find their way to me just through and sharing Tao and sharing these ideas and being able to be a support for somebody going through a divorce, going through a separation. It's like, it's important to understand the depths that relationships have, you know, and it's not temporary. The relationship isn't temporary. You've always been in relationship with this person, but we can bring it into the manifestation, but that is temporary. It's, it's, it's that when we bring those things into the manifestation that become temporary. But the love that we have for each other and the love and the connection that we have for each and every person on this planet and in the universe is within us. And as it says here, how do I know this to be true? The evidence is within me as it is within you. And I think that that's a wonderful way to end this and Thank you guys so much for joining me. I may pop in to do a random DAO uh, over the weekend. Um, so if, if you know, like, because I usually end on Fridays. 
but um, I'm free kind of on Sunday and I may want to come in and do something. And I might do it a little later in the day, but, but we'll see. We'll see. It's something that I've been playing with, the idea of like doing, doing one, one over the weekend as well at some point just to kind of let other people know. Like, cause like the people who are going to be awake at this hour are going to be a very specific group of people. So it's not, um, not necessarily the same people all the time. Karen's going to join me again. Um, Hey Karen, how are you? Hi, I just wanted to uh, pop on back here quick, just to thank you for going through that uh, verse to verse. Um, verse through verse, and of course, um, the synchronicities, and um, I just wanted to share that I, too, am suffering from addiction for a moment at this point, and okay. my husband still is in the midst of his, so going through that um, just was so lovely, and when you said about the relationships are always there, just here in this moment, in this time, in this alignment is what I heard is temporary. And um, thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard. It's hard. Addiction is hard. Addiction isn't, you know, and, and addiction is rampantly spreading in the world in ways that we can't even fathom right now. But, um, you know, so I did a, uh, uh, a podcast series a number of years ago called recover yourself. And I talk about, you know, the concept of recovering to something rather than just recovering from it. Although recovering from is such an important aspect of that. Um, It is. And, you know, even with it, I mean, uh, for me, my substance was alcohol. Mm -hmm. And so even even with it, though, I'm grateful for it because without that and and without those choices I made, the cause and effect, and um, I I wouldn't be where I'm at now. And that is in a place um, to have a deeper understanding um, and... um, that uh, desire and wish for deeper fulfillment within myself and healing that and and collectively um, that you know um, where um, we're heading and where many of us are and so to be able to go through that challenge um, mm-hmm. and then be here and even throughout the difficulties uh, like I said, hold that love and space on a different level because of that degree of empathy and compassion. Um, It it always goes back to just continuous, continuous, you know, surrendering for a deeper level of understanding and um, knowledge because that's just ever flowing, just, you know, like uh, just that's just like the waves and the vibration. So. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And thanks for coming up and saying that. And, you know, I'm loving people through this is so important. You know, loving your husband through this. Even that, that, that doesn't mean you stay in the relationship, doesn't mean you put yourself at risk, but you have love in your heart for the journey that he's on. You know, it's, um, it's not your responsibility to be in that journey but we love that we love them on the journey that they're on yeah absolutely and and um with it always comes a deeper love and understanding and acceptance um and allowance actually um gentleness for yourself for yourself. For yourself. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. Because there's a lot of responsibility and, you know, we were involved in that, you know, when we were out there when we were doing our thing, we were like, okay, we, we know, we know how to manipulate. We know how to do all of those things that, that, that make people respond, 
Like that's how we were able to keep our addictions alive, right? Like because we we did that. We know it. And and it's like, you know, right. you know and right, and right. exactly. And, and it's all and it's all it's all a facade. It's all just us grasping. And and that's, you know, that may be what your husband is going to attempt to do as well and and that is that's it, he's he's well within his right to do that. But we are also well within our right to have good boundaries and be able to love ourselves before we put ourselves and our children at risk to um, to manipulation and to those things. And so you're you're doing so you're doing beautiful work, and and it's not easy to do what you're attempting to do. And, and I I want to just commend you for taking care of yourself and knowing that your love is being offered to him through this. If he does, if he cannot receive it, or if he doesn't want to receive it at this time, that's okay. It's still there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it leads to, um, yeah, a deeper definition of holding uh, space and yeah. sacred space, and and space is, yeah, just infinite. So, yeah. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you. you. Absolutely. You You have a wonderful weekend. Likewise. So, yeah. So, um, well, I'm going to be wrapping up there. Uh, Thank you, Karen. And thank you. I'm going to take you off cue, Karen, so you don't have to worry about that. There you go. Um, And thank you, Martha, for joining me for 11 and 21. I appreciate you both and, uh, and everybody who listened. Um, Thank you so much. And, um, This is Martin Jen. Again, I might do something over the weekend, but if not, I'll see you guys on Monday. Until next time, keep recovering yourself.